society and where people are forced to stay home, limit interactions, lim limit outside interactions. And I know that that has changed uh, media consumption as well. Tell us about that. Well, you know, uh, one of the favorite pastimes of the American person right across the board is TV. Um, and we definitely saw an uptake on that across the board, um, you know, with our from our streaming um, meter in particular. Right. Um, it's increased now um, tremendously across the board, whether you're um, Asian or not. But for Asian homes in particular, because they've been the ones that have been cord cutters first, we've definitely seen an uptick in the amount of time that's being spent with internet connected TV devices like Roku or Amazon Fire Sticks, things like that. You mentioned cord cutters. Uh, why do you think are Asian Americans at the forefront of this revolution to switch from your traditional media to digital platforms? I can speak for myself, right? When I, you know, when, when I first decided to make the move, I remember calling the cable company and um, it was, they were also my internet providers. And they said to me, wait, you want to keep your cable and, you know, and throw away your internet, right? And, they, and I said, no, 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 the exact opposite of that. And they couldn't believe it. Um, I think, you know, we've always been more um, likely to try out new technology, right? It's always cool to be the, the first person with a toy, <laughs> right? Right. Um, and, and I think um, if you look across the board, whether it's with gaming, um, gaming platforms or even with like the latest digital watches, now I'm dating myself here, um, <laughs> and even like the use of Alexa, you know, and, and then are you using different devices to connect to your Alexa, you know, um, those, those have always been led by more Asians than um, other groups within the population. I mean, the other thing also is that we tend to be the more professional set and therefore have a higher income level. So there's a little more um, buying power to spend on some of those electronics across the board. Right, exactly. Because it can also be expensive because it adds up. You know, you have one setup, but then, you, you know, these um, makers, companies, they're smart. They, they add on features like to add on, you have to pay this and that. And so Keeping that in mind, especially as the holiday season approaches, I know a lot of people are planning to stay home. Even Thanksgiving celebrations perhaps are going to be digital. Even Christmas celebrations perhaps might be digital. And so a lot of people are now thinking of maybe cuddling up in front of a computer to watch or stream something that can make, me, make them feel warm inside. Especially as we open the program, you, you said there's a lot of things going on around us. Um, so can you give us your top five must stream shows or movies for Filipinos for Asian American? Okay, so we can't give you Filipino Americans in particular because we don't have that level of granularity, but I can give you uh, from an Asian American standpoint, you know, what's been kind of tops, right? So for me personally, um, I'm, a, I'm a chick flick girl at heart. So when Emily in Paris um, was coming out, I was said, I'm going to check that out. And then I did not know that she had uh, this Asian sidekick when she, before I break too much of the story for those of you who haven't watched it. Right. But, um, so I thought I should take a look and see what our data says about that. And interestingly, um, the Asian American audience for that show over indexes total population by almost double. Wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's lighthearted, you know, it's fun. It's just a little something to take your mind off things. It's only a half hour long thereabouts um, each episode. So I thought it was the perfect antidote at the end of a long day when you've just been at your, at your computer typing all day, right? Right. Um, I think a couple of other things that have been um, really great, um, Mindy Kaling's Never Have I Ever, you know, there's um, a bunch of different K-dramas too that are out there that have been really cool to, to watch. Um, Kingdom um, is one of these like over the top, you know, completely different type of world um, that has a good mix of martial arts and a little bit of Lord of the Rings kind of <laughs> overtone to it. That's also been another one that has more than double um, Asian American um, population watching it. Um, relative to the U.S. population. And I think for the Filipino-Americans too, uh, Joe Coy, um, big Filipino comedian name out there, he's got a, a viewership that over-indexes with Asian-Americans by three times relative wow. to total population. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, you know, Joe Coy isn't, um, isn't producing new content as much anymore, but, you know, hey, that's the beauty of streaming, right? You can always go back to it and check it out. 
Exactly. I, I love Jock. I remember in my old program, a former program, uh, I interviewed him just when he was getting, uh, just when he got a standing ovation in one of the late night shows. And he hasn't even was, uh, struck these deals yet. He was playing and, and just constantly working. And, and, and as a Filipino, I'm also very proud to see him rise. And he's not only done that, he's also opening the door for a lot of other Filipino comedians, but that's for another story. We also have another Filipino um, on Ratchet, yeah. Do you know, right? It, it's also one of the more popular um, Netflix uh, series. Yes, def definitely. And um, so unfortunately, I personally had not watched that yet. I just did, you know, did a quick uh, Google search on it right before this. <laughs> Watch it, but right. I, I'm gonna put that on my list for sure. And it's, um, and it sounds like it's something that, um, again, you know, would be that perfect antidote to these times where we want to have that little bit of lighthearted um, connection to who we are, this in people who, who look like us and the storylines that are familiar to us, right? Um, and the availability of options across all the streaming platforms are definitely um, the perfect solution to that. Right. Which I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, we've had, um, uh, we, we did a work from home survey earlier this year, right? And okay. we saw that um, there were 25% of all adults who were surveyed said they had added a service since <laughs> <laughs> COVID lockdown began. I was like, okay. Right, um, exactly. And, yeah. Right. And I think one interesting data point also to note is that while there's so many of us who are stuck at home, um, there's also been an increase, we're seeing an increase in watching um, during the day. So, you know, I think the whole idea of prime time viewing as just being that 5 to 9 p.m. Um, has shifted a little bit too. So as to an advertiser, you know, to think about that as another opportunity to tap into um, the audiences you want to reach. During the day, right. But then, which brings me to my next question. I, I know that because there's a lot of Asian Americans watching, do you think that has something to do with now how big productions are looking at more diverse shows? Right, because it's always been a challenge for us Asians. How do we make our voice heard in supporting diverse content? And now I think we're seeing a little bit of a revolution. Yeah, I would I would definitely say that. Right, I think um, you know with the with Parasite being named as uh, you know winning the Oscar, right? That was definitely um, a milestone for us. Um, leading to the hashtags like Oscar's so white and the scrutiny that the Emmys were getting even you know earlier this year too. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, I think what's going on with the racial reckoning in this country too, um, even though the focus has been on black communities, I think it's also reached Asian Americans, right? Especially with COVID at the beginning of this year when we were being subjected to a lot of xenophobia um, being called, you know, the, the virus being called the Chinese virus and so forth. So I think all of that has almost, um, come to a perfect storm that has led to um, this, as you said, a revolutionary time where we, we as um, an industry, in the media industry, are also calling for change and need to really step up, you know, and number one, we are in the, we're kind of in the driver's seat here. Mm -hmm. I think um, investments are increasing across the board in the need to get more content creators, more um, of those types of diverse stories told. Um, secondly, the audiences are asking for it based on the numbers that I just shared with you, you know, it's almost like if you've got Asian content, you're going to get the Asian consumers, right? Mm -hmm. And if you know that Asian consumers have a big buying power, you'll want to be able to tap into that. Um, we are also one of the biggest advocates on social media, right? Um, there's a lot of social media um, groups out there. Subtle Asian Trace is one of my favorites, actually, which is kind <laughs> of a funny one, but, you know, you get a, a whole host of topics out there. And um, something that always comes over and over again to me is the stories that people tell about how they live with their parents and the differences that they see across the generations. But there's also this heartwarming connection of like, how, how are the stories that I'm living today as a first born American, for example, um, how is that being supported by what the vision of their parents were when they first came to this country? Um, so I think there's that intergenerational connection that somehow asks, creating this demand for right. authentic stories to be told by Asians for Asians. Right. I always say that the stories that are told in a culturally relevant way, right? Culturally relevant, culturally sensitive. With that said, based on everything that you've shared with us today, um, Patricia, the future looks bright for the Asian American community. 
Yeah, I'm, um, I would definitely agree with you on that front, right? Um, so, you know, um, one of the things that we are trying to do as, as Nielsen, you know, because we provide the metrics for the industries that we, and we know that what gets measured gets done, you know, we really want to drive, out, drive up the, the game here and um, provide metrics. For the first time um, next month, we're going to be releasing a new report it's, um, that's going to be all about how inclusion looks across TV. And um, it's really going to um, look at how stories, look at how stories are being told, what kind of characters are being represented, as well as even, you know, eventually we're going to use some of the content metrics that we have to look at who's behind the camera um, to make sure that, you know, the stories that are being told are being created by people who are representative and diverse. And, um, <clears throat> you know, this is an early look at that data, right? Shows for Asian Americans and how inclusive different TV genres are. And by TV genres, I mean things like comedy versus drama and so forth, right? Um, Asians are above parity when it comes to sci-fi and dramas. Um, no surprise there, right? Oh, exactly. but they are definitely below parity when it comes to comedy and reality reality shows and i mean if you just in our earlier conversation we talked about joe coy we in this aquafina and um um hassan minaj and some of those are really big names and they're in comedy you know so even though they are um big names to us i think our metrics are telling us that hey there's opportunity here to really lift those types of talents up and in this day and age, who doesn't want to hear a funny story or two? <laughs> exactly. I think it's gone back to the point where um, we consume for entertainment because we need that right now to relax our minds, to laugh, to have to give us something to laugh about. And, and that is why information like this is also much needed because then producers, I know, um, come to you guys to get this information so that they know how to serve the market. And so thank you. Uh, in, in, in a very big way, you're also advocating for our Asian American community. Thank you, Patricia and Nielsen, and more power to you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be on here with us.